Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to episode 5, I think, for our Pixel Platformer series. In this video, we're going to be implementing some spikes that the enemy can uh, take hits on, and uh, so some form of taking damage or some form of thing that the player would need to avoid. I can't think of the word hazard. That's the word I'm looking for. This series is made possible by my 1-Bit Godot course, which is has recently been updated and is currently on sale. There'll be a link in the description if you want to check that out. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we should do is implement a simple spike scene. So we're going to press the plus button up here to make a new scene, and we're going to do... Uh, let's see, so in this case, all we need to detect is overlap between the spikes and the player. So an area 2D is going to be a good node for us for detecting overlap, since we're not going to actually have to do any physics stuff. We'll call this spike, spikes, I guess. And I, I don't remember for sure. I thought I saw spikes in our tile set. We might have to get creative here. Oh yeah, there is, okay. So let's do a sprite, because we want to give our spikes some form of sprite. We'll drag in our tiles packed texture, and then we'll come into, we need to get only this specific area in the tiles packed texture. We can do this by selecting region, enabled, and then we come down here to texture region and we can zoom in here and scroll and we'll set our snap to pixel snap maybe you know uh we might want to take up the whole nine by nine so let's do grid snap and it was 18 by 18 i think was our tile set there we go. So now you can see we've got it set up to 18 by 18. We can select just this region for our little spikes. We'll click on the texture region here and we're going to move these up so that they're kind of right on this baseline origin line like that. Now our area 2D is going to need a collision shape. Okay, so if we click on the warning, it will tell us that. We can click on our root node, the spikes area 2D, and search for collision shape. And we could do any type of collision shape here. I think we should try and be lenient to the player, so we'll make the, the actual collision hurt box smaller than the spikes themselves to give some leniency to the player. And we'll start by going into our uh, I think we can do, I think, let's see, we could do, let's actually not do a basic collision shape. We're going to click on spikes again. We'll, de we'll delete that. Click on spikes, click plus, and we'll use a collision shape or a collision polygon 2D. And with the collision polygon 2D, you can just draw the shape that you want using these little buttons up here. And uh, we'll want pixel snap on, but we can turn off our grid snap. And then we can just, I'm just going to click here, 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 here. And draw that. That's going to be the collision shape. And, and I think that should work pretty good for our spikes here. So now we have our spikes, and we can hit Control S to save this scene. And we can come back into our world, and you know, this looks like a good pit for some spikes. So let's click on our world node, and let's click, uh, well actually, let's drag in our spikes. We can drop them here, and here, and here. And if we run the game, there are our spikes down there. Our player goes uh, behind them. And this is a situation where I do think it would be useful. We're going to 
more often than not want our player to show up in front. So let's set the player ZX to maybe 10. It doesn't matter exactly what that number is. Uh, we'll just make sure that the player shows up in front of everything. There we go. Now we need to be able to detect when these spikes are colliding with the player. And there's a lot of different ways that you can, that you can do collisions inside of Godot. In fact, uh, you, can, you can use specifically the collision layers and masks. And collision layers and masks can be really useful and super important to learn how that works. It recently has been changed a little bit how they work, um, but they're still very similar to how it was before. It was a slight change. But I feel like since this is an absolute beginner tutorial, we're not actually going to go into layers and masks yet because it can get confusing in my experience for beginners. And it's not that I couldn't do it. I could. I'm sure most of you would get it. But I think for this tutorial, uh, we don't need to. We can just go into the easiest way, the simplest way to detect a collision um, and what you're colliding with in, in particular because that's kind of the benefit of collision layers and masks. So let's click on our spikes here. And if we come over here to the inspector, over on the right hand side there's a node tab and you can click on that. And inside of this tab, we get groups and we get signals. And these, these two tab, they're kind of their own tabs here. We're not going to worry about groups. We're going to worry about signals. Now, a signal is Godot's way of implementing uh, kind of like a, a notification system into your programming. So you can send out... Imagine you're sending a text and it's, uh, it's, or no, it's an email. It's like an email list and people can subscribe to that email list. And every time you send out an email, it will send it out to everyone who is subscribed on that list, right? And maybe you can send out an invitation and all of those people can accept that invitation and they can unsubscribe or subscribe to that list. Well, that's what signals work like. So here we've got some signals that are used for area 2D. Let's see they're under the area 2D here and there's some different ones and in particular the one we want to look at is body entered. So this is a signal that our area 2D can subscribe to and run a function every time a body, a physics body, enters our area. Okay? So let's double click on this signal right here and it will say connect a signal to a method. Okay, we don't have a method yet. So we can just click on our, uh, well, I guess it's already selected here. It wants to connect it to, why isn't this doing this automatically? I'm used to it doing this automatically. Body entered, spikes, and then you just hit connect. Oh, scene does not contain any script. Silly me. Okay, it doesn't know how to do it automatically if you haven't attached a script. So we're going to press this plus button to attach a spikes.gd script to our spikes. Okay, and I'm just going to hit control S to save. And we can get rid of this stuff right here. We don't need that. Now, when we come back into our spikes, we can click on the body entered and hit connect. And it will automatically name a function for this signal and this function will connect to it. So now what's going to happen is every time a body, uh, any body, any physics body enters our spikes, it's going to call this function and will get whatever body is passed in. So we can do print body dot uh, name maybe and save that okay now when we run the game it's probably going to print some stuff because uh, technically our tile map 
collisions are also physics bodies. So you can see that it's printing tile map down here for each of these because they're colliding just barely with the tile map. And if our player comes down here, boom, we get player, player, player. And you can see that it is detecting that initial, the initial overlap of when the body enters the area 2D. Okay, so now what we can do is we can, we, you could do something like this if body.name equals player. And I've seen this done before. Um, you know, body.q free. So that would delete the player. We'll actually run this code. Well, this isn't going to how we're going to finish it, but it's just, okay, our player can now be destroyed when he lands on the spikes. However, I don't like this system because I don't like using strings in particular. But Godot has a way of giving a specific name, a global name to a class. And if we come to our player.gd script up here at the top, we can do class name player. Okay. And this names are anything that has this script attached to it, which in this case is just our player scene that has this script. It gives it this player class name, and I use uppercase here. And now this can be accessed inside of our spike. So we can say, and there's a special operator called is. So, well, it, yeah, we'll delete the whole thing. Just type it out again. If body is player, cute body, we'll tab down body.q free okay now we don't have to do the is and check the name we can just check if it's a player and there we go it was destroyed if we didn't check if it was a player what would happen I'm just gonna hit control k on this line to comment it out so you don't have to follow along with this part the spikes would destroy our tile map because the tile map technically collides with the spikes right right as the game starts. So that's not what we want, but we can do this simple check. So this is kind of like um, half of the equation when you're detecting who you're colliding with. The other half of the equation is the collision layers and masks. And we're not gonna cover that, at least not quite yet. I don't know if we'll cover it in this series. My Action RPG series covers it, so you can go check out that series. And it goes more in depth into like hitboxes and hurt boxes and stuff. But I wanna keep this series a little bit simpler. But you can also overdo it with collision layers and masks. And I have overdone it a little bit in the past. Um, relying on them and this so if you combine this method with layers and masks that's kind of the optimal way to do it the best way to do it in my opinion so you've learned half the equation the other half's in my action RPG series if you want to check that out you can check out the collision uh, the hurt boxes and hit boxes section so we've got spikes now in our game and our player can land on these spikes and die we might want to try something other than body.q free. Um, maybe we could do get tree dot uh, reload current scene. So we'll do get tree dot reload current scene. This should reset the scene that we're in. So boop, and then our player comes back to here. And that's a pretty good system in my opinion. Ah for uh, punishing the player for hitting the spikes like that. Okay, we're about 15 minutes into this video. It's going to be a shorter one, but now you've set up some basic collisions for spikes. In the next video, we're going to be doing some basic enemies. I think that's the next step. Uh, the other thing we could do, you know what? I changed my mind. I think we're gonna do one more thing in this video. We're gonna, we're gonna put a camera inside of our game just because I, f I feel like it and I think it, it's not a hard thing to do in Godot. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do. So we'll click on our player, come back to our world scene, click on the player, click the little plus button here, and we're going to do a camera, find camera 2D. And now you can see it's going to draw this purple line. 
for where our camera is and you can see that our camera is centered right on our player and that's because we attached it to the player okay and for now this is going to work we might change this later there's other ways to do this but we're just going to attach it to the player for now and actually you know what uh, I think that a simpler way to handle this, this isn't bad, but I think that a simpler way to handle this is to just delete the camera off our player there and then come into our player's scene and attach the camera here. There we go. So now the camera is attached to our player's scene. So anytime we have a player inside of any level, there'll be a camera attached to it. Okay, so come back into the player scene, click on camera, and make sure you press the current. So this is the this is the this is a really common problem is to forget to click current. I think it should just be on by default. Um, I don't know. It's hard to say because you don't always want it on. But you do have to tell Godot that you want this to be the current camera. You'll see the lines get really bright and big, so you know that it's current. And that will make sure that our camera is actually used. If you don't do that, it won't be used. Now our character has a camera attached to him and can move around in this world with the camera. So you can build much bigger levels now. Whoa, that was funny because I was holding the jump key. Yeah. So you can build much bigger levels. You can start putting spikes in. In fact, at this point, you've got a functional game. There I guess you'd want to have some sort of a uh, go to next level thing that we could go to. That would be the next step because we'd have spikes, a way for you to die, and then have a go to the next level. Of course, you can soft lock your game by running off this cliff and falling into infinity. So that's an issue. <laughs> but yeah, you can see how easy it is to add a camera to the game. Really simple. Nothing complicated there. There's some other, there's some properties in the camera you can mess with. So like smoothing, for example, if you turn this on, then the camera will kind of lag behind the player a bit. You can see how it kind of lags behind the player. Um, I'm not, I don't know, this, this effect can be used well, but it really, it, it can be a little bit jittery sometimes, so a, a solution for that is to um, come into your general project settings and then search for pixel. Oh, that's, that's just a property. I have to click search pixel. And then you can see there is under 2D rendering, there is use GPU pixel snapping. And uh, this just snaps your view to the pixels on the screen. And that can help sometimes with jitter or for some people can make it worse. But these are these are kind of your own preferences that you get to decide whether you want to set them or not. I personally prefer, uh, unless I'm gonna get really into finding solutions, I like it to just be quick and snappy with the smoothing off. But it is a personal preference and there's ways to fix the issues that can come up with smoothing there's there's ways around that so this is going to be it for the video now that we're about 18 20 minutes in i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you learned something from it and that you're enjoying this series i've been having fun with this series and i think i want to do more series like this on different types of games um i i recently released a tile map a star resource that is um, open source and anybody can use it. I think it'd be fun to do some sort of like basic tactics um, series like this, like a tactics series, a turn-based or some sort of a turn-based game on a grid using that A star tile map open source uh, resource that I released a little while back. I think that could be fun and I think it could be fun to look into like a turn-based series of some sort. I just think there are a lot of different series that I could do where it's kind of more casual like this and we could program together and work through any mistakes or any questions. So I've been enjoying it. It seems that you all have as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.